all I can say is if you don't have a direction for your life, if you don't have a vision for your life, a big vision, a big goal, other things will come and swoop up your money. So if you don't have a direction, if you don't have a goal, you don't have a direction, and what does it say in scripture? Without vision, my people perish. If you don't have a vision for your life, you don't have a vision for the next level, the next generation. Well, your money's gonna get wrapped up in drugs. Your money's gonna get wrapped up at the bar. Your money's gonna get wrapped up in gambling if you don't have a direction for your money. Money doesn't wanna sit still. Money wants to go places. Money needs to flow. That's why it's called cash flow. And so if you don't have a vision and a direction, a plan for your money, boom. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay, you're from Dallas, Texas, and we are in part two of my reaction to rich versus poor. Is the economy rigged? Uh, there's a video here by Jubilee, and my team brought this to my attention. We had a very, very interesting part one. Many of you wanted a part two, so uh, I'm going to provide my best natural reaction to this because I have not watched the second part of this video, so you and I are going to be experiencing this together. Uh, so let's take a look here um, on the question here of I'm worried where my next meal will come from. Let's check this out. I've worried where my next meal will come from. What a tough thing to Me experience here in America right in this day and age. Applying for EBT yeah, it's terrible. Because we are just like living check to check. They're fist bumping each other like it's cool to be on EBT. Do you think it's okay to be on EBT? Do you think it's a right? It's a, a cool thing? Do you part of EBT? Uh, for one month, when I was in Southern California, I was a single father th of three, actually at that time, I was a single father of two kids. I went on, what's that, what's that thing? Wick. I went on Wick for one month. And I felt ashamed doing it because here I am as, as a sergeant in the Marines. I felt ashamed doing it because I went to go get my stamps and I went down to the Albertsons right there in uh, Orange County off of Red Hill, right down the street from Marine Corps Air Station, Tustin Military Base. And people were huffing and puffing. Hurry up. Waiting in line for me because I'm waiting for the cashier to cash out my milk, my cereal, my cheese. And uh, that just wasn't an experience I thought was, in my opinion, dignified as a United States Marine, as a Sapala. You know, I want to change our family last name. And I just didn't think it was something I wanted to lean on. Like right now, and I'm supporting both of us because she just lost her job. We are like literally trying to get help from the government so that we can know that we have the funds to get groceries it's so hard and it's it feels like it feels like it's not yeah. as yeah i empathize with this scenario no. people make it seem <laughs> to have yeah. everything stripped away from you and to not know where you're gonna sleep <laughs> yeah i've been there hey I, I feel this scenario i've been bankrupt uh i've been through divorce I've been a single father for 14 years. Uh, you, if you guys ever check out any of my other videos, I talk about my infamous Jimmy John's story where uh, I can barely swipe my credit card and hopefully my kids could eat. So I empathize with this scenario. And because I've fought through this scenario, I know that there's a brighter day on the other side if you continue to fight. I didn't know what we were going to eat. I didn't know where we were going to sleep. And not to be a victim, but it's not my fault why I'm here. You know, it's because I speak out against cult behavior, I speak out against pedophilia. And publishing my story has, the domino effect of that has led me to not knowing where I'm gonna eat and I've never had that happen to me before prior to four months ago. And that's just really tough. I empathize Thank with you her. for yeah. sharing your story, yeah. that's really powerful. And um, yeah, like if you need help, like after this, let's just, let's yeah. just talk. That pulls on. I, by the way, I love this. <laughs> oh yeah! So there's a guy, he's categorized as being rich. The reason why you make money is to help people in this type of need. And when you make money, you can't help see somebody struggling and not want to help them. One of my favorite things to do is when I go to a restaurant, one of my favorite things to do, I love to tip 30%. Why? Because I was a server. I know what it's like to be a server. I know it's like to live on tips. I know it's like to put tips upon tips upon tips, just to make things work. One of my favorite things to do is to help people in need. And that's the reason why you make money is not necessarily become a millionaire, but to help people in deep need.
pulled my heartstrings because I, my mother raised us three kids by herself and my father was a wife beater. He was also a child molester, so anyone mm. listening can connect the dots on that. Yep. I feel for you. I almost want to jump out because it was only a short period of time, you know, and just that short period of time when you're busted or whatever, and you're just like whatever, but you guys were like in the real Trenches. Thick of it. Yeah. Really, you guys are in the trenches. I, yep. I visited the trenches for like a couple you months. You had a toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a toe, had a toe in the toe trenches. trenches. You know? So I'm, I'm getting paid paycheck to paycheck. And on top of that, I have a crippling gambling addiction. I'm addicted to weed. I'm addicted to alcohol. I'm addicted to vaping. And as soon as I have that direct deposit, it it's like I have no else. control. Almost like I go, like I black out and I start gambling, start ordering drinks, start ordering weed. Yeah, and, I get it. And then I it's come out of that, that it happens a lot no guys control too. feeling, and I'm like thinking, how am I going to feed my pets this week, my cat, my dog? Like I had all these plans up to my payday. Before I know it, all my money's gone. And it's addiction. I'm not expert, I'm not expert in, in addiction. All I can say is if you don't have a direction for your life, if you don't have a vision for your life, a big vision, a big goal, other things will come and swoop up your money. So if you don't have a direction, if you don't have a goal, you don't have a direction, and what does it say in scripture? Without vision, my people perish. If you don't have a vision for your life, you don't have a vision for the next level, the next generation. Well, your money's gonna get wrapped up in drugs. Your money's gonna get wrapped up at the bar. Your money's gonna get wrapped up in gambling. If you don't have a direction for your money, money doesn't wanna sit still. Money wants to go places. Money needs to flow. That's why it's called cash flow. And so if you don't have a vision and a direction and a plan for your money, boom, it's going to go to other addictions. $15 an hour is not enough for minimum wage. It's not, for no, not enough for minimum wage. People I did have a question for you two. You both mentioned that you suffer from addiction and that as soon as you get a paycheck, it's gone, whether it's gambling or weed. I, I think I know where he's going with this one. So it doesn't matter how much money you make. You can make 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour. If you don't have a plan for your finances, you don't have a vision for your financial future, no matter if they pay you that much money, it's always gonna disappear. How many times have you seen people that win lotteries? How many times have you seen athletes after three, four, five years retiring from their sport and next thing you know, they're broke? It's because there's not a vision for their finances. And if money doesn't have a vision, doesn't have a place, it's gonna cycle and most likely it's gonna cycle out of your house versus in. Or shopping or whatever. If you had a higher income, would that change? I don't think so. Yes, because the whole reason really? I gamble is like, let me get that $60,000 win and I'll stop gambling. No, That's you my won't. Mindset, right? I, I, and another I doubt thing it. What do you guys is, think? I, I doubt like it. If I were to have like passive income, I guess you can say, or I'm a big believer in this value and principle that what you've done with the least, you're going to do with the most. So if you, if, you, if you can't be trusted with the very least, how can you think you can be trusted with the most? It's a value and a principle. If you weren't saving money when you were broke, you're not going to save money when you're making money. If you weren't giver, you weren't a giver when you didn't have money, you're not going to be a giver when you have a lot of money. It's, it's money is simply a magnifier. It's going to simply magnify the deep down characteristics, communication relationship that you have with money deep down inside. Money is not a solver. Money is a magnifier be financially stable, I can pursue and distract myself with my actual passions. Like, I want to start a true crime YouTube channel, but I don't have the laptop, I don't have the camera. The addiction takes control, so I don't think- How, how hard is it right now to edit video? She's making 45,000. How hard is it right now to edit video on your cell phone? Do you really need a laptop? Do you need really, do you really need a video camera? Excuses, excuses. You can do so, much thing, so many things on a, on a whether it be an Android or an iPhone, uh, you can be very resourceful. There's people in third world countries in the Philippines and Africa that have massive TikTok followings. And uh, uh, there's, there's that one TikToker, I mean, he can't even spell, he, he does that, you know, you know what I'm talking about, he does, he does this all the time. Two years ago, this kid lost his job and he started doing TikTok videos like this to simplify what people are trying to do so very complicated and he simplifies it and people are laughing at it because his solution is so simple and he doesn't say anything. But mannerisms like that. And anyway, make a long story short, he's right now in a lot of commercials and he's being signed to a lot of things because he was resourceful with the minimum and the little that he had. I feel like a lot of jobs will pay minimum wage 
but they will expect maximum effort. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm like, if you're gonna pay me minimum wage, I'm putting in the bare minimum effort. I've always looked at it the opposite. By the way, isn't that true? Isn't that true? That's why there's a difference between employees and entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. So think about this, for the rest of your life, if that's the relationship you have with your employer, the employer does this. They're gonna pay you the minimum amount necessary to make sure you don't quit. Right, and you do the minimum necessary at that job for you not to get fired. So you have a minimum, minimum relationship. Why don't you ask your employer, hey, hey boss, how much you sought to seek a better relationship with your boss? Again, the mantra is how you do one thing is how you do everything. Ask your boss, how can I improve this department? How can I solve the problems of this department? How can I make your job easier? I mean, have you ever thought about that? Because then at that point, by creating value, guess what happens? You should look towards a raise. Like if I go into a company and they're paying me minimum wage, I do everything that I can to get promoted. Yes. Hi, my name is Good. Todd. I am 29 years old. I am a real estate investor and a YouTuber and I make about $1.4 million per year. Good for you. When you grow up the way I did with no money and your mom is struggling and crying herself to sleep every night because you can't pay the bills, yeah. that takes a toll on you as a kid and seeing that struggle. Yeah. I got my first job when I was 12 years old, um, literally shoveling horse poop for $3 an hour. Yeah. And I looked at myself when I was 12 years old and I was like, you've got to make a million dollars a year by the time you're 30. Mm -hmm. My name is Sean, I'm 23 years old. I'm a musician and content creator and I make minimum wage at a retail job. If I wasn't having to work every day to pay my rent, then I would have more time to, to make music, make music and it. connect with people and find venues to perform my music. And if I had the money, I would be able to market and promote my music so that it could reach a wider audience. I, I, I don't buy that. I, I don't buy that. You know why? Um, I can't tell you how many people we've been able to access through just DMs. You know, I mean, if, you, if you have good music, I can't tell you how many times we've came across people because they just put out good content out there. Uh, we've had people make music for us. Why? Because of word of mouth. Because you put a good quality product out there, you have good quality content, and people want to share it. It's not because you have to spend all this money on marketing. I can get so much away just through DMs, especially in this day and age. Yeah, guys, they're not gonna wanna hear this, but I hear a lot of excuses why they don't succeed. And the other guy here, the, the, the kid that was 29 years old and making $1.4 million a year, a real estate investor, YouTube, YouTuber, I sense a area of pain and frustration in him scooping horse poop. And he's, I think there's one day he said, you know what, I'm tired of living my life like this. Because the only time you make a change in your life is when you experience great pain. The, the other people that are complaining, I don't think they experience great pain yet enough for them to want to do something about it. I think what they're experiencing, that great pain, great pain, great pain, and they've been in an environment where they expected somebody else to help them. The other portion, the other side of this room, are the people that said, you know what? I'm not gonna wait for anybody else to help me out. I'm gonna help myself out. And they are where they are. More money, more problems. Oh, here we go. All right, Biggie. More money, better problems. More money, more problems, but that's a path that I'm willing to take uh, on. Me too, because all the problems day. that come along with not having money, um, I can't imagine. Yeah, I've had problems there. before. I've had I problems with money. Point no money. to position myself um, adjacent to people who I felt like I could learn from. I remember parking my little Chevy Cruze up um, off of Griffith Observatory in Hollywood Hills just to be around money. Okay, now you guys want to start? start? Yeah, yeah, please. A lot of the problems in my life would be solved with just not even if I was rich, but just like a little bit more money. I would just have so much less stress and less things to worry about and I wouldn't be finding myself in these situations where I'm worried about how am I going to pay rent, how am I going to get gas to drive, how am I going to eat. Understandable. More money, like more social responsibility, mm -hmm. right, going back to. What does that mean? Like if you're a billionaire then it's, you have social responsibility to take care of people who might have less than you. Really? Employee. I'm not seeing that. In, 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 in modern day life. You have life. millionaire beef. In, you got in a millionaire modern day life, he, he does it. Exactly. Beef. I want to add real quick to what you were saying. And yeah, this is the same guy that works for Disney, which was started by an entrepreneur, which is a which, which billionaire, right? But he's got a beef 
with billionaires got a beef with people who make a lot of money. I don't understand that. that I have my first felony when I was 14 years old. I had gotten a DUI in 2018, so I was still going in and out of courthouses. I'm struggling trying to get a job, applying, getting in. Yeah, this is this this is my. Oh. If there's a beef with I have with the government, it's this issue right here, that that good people who have paid their debt to society, and even though they've had a felony, they've got this scarlet letter across their chest, and they can't even give it a job. They have some form of job, then find a background check, oh, you got a felony, we got to fire, we got to let you go. I don't think that's fair. I think if you've paid your debt to society, felony or misdemeanor, it should not preclude you from getting another job. Why? Because if you can't get a job, then what are you then prone to do? If you don't know how to start your own business because you don't have the right help and the right people around you, guess then what you are more prone to doing? Committing crime. So all in all, I've individually and personally been on both sides of money. And for the last 23 years in the insurance industry, I've helped people on a day-to-day -day basis, week -to week basis, year-to-year -year basis with this very issue. And I can't say this, the saving grace for a lot of people is really down to four things. It's part of our how to create wealth workshops is number one, if you want to improve your financial situation, consider learning sales. Why? Because you're going to start learning through sales, effective communication. There's a problem out there. You've got a solution. You show somebody I can provide value and help their situation out. They buy from you. There's a win-win situation. The second thing is learn entrepreneurship to two tax systems. One for those that are employed and those for the employer, those that have a business, whether part-time or full-time. I can't tell you how many of my expenses as an employee, once I shifted to becoming the entrepreneur type mindset, how many expenses turn into tax deductible expenses according to the letter of the law with the IRS. So things like food, gas, car payments, cell phone payments, Wi-Fi, home office. These are just six things I just thought about at the top of my head that can be written off in your taxes. So instead of you unnecessarily paying money in taxes, instead of getting a second job or third job or fourth job, consider starting a side business. Consider starting a side business. That's what I did. I was working part-time in the military, got out, became a full-time entrepreneur once I got out the military, and it's been my saving grace. The last time I took a paycheck from somebody else was 2003. And the third thing is considering working in the right industry. You work in the right industry, guess what? By default, working in the right industry will get you paid by default, because here's what I realized. Hard work does not pay off, sadly. I was in the military, eight years in the Marine Corps. A lot of us worked hard, a lot of cops work hard, a lot of firefighters work hard, but they don't make a lot of money. A lot of people work hard at their jobs, but you don't make a lot of money. However, if you work hard in the right industry, a wealthy industry, and you learn sales, you learn entrepreneurship, guess what? The whole world starts opening to you. And last but not least, number four, find yourself the right platform and find yourself the right mentor. Meaning that you have to hold yourself accountable in discipline to that mentor to guide you and coach you. And you wanna find ways to earn their time. So if you're out there, consider these four things. Number one, sales, two, entrepreneurship, three, right industry. Number four, consider the right platform and slash mentorship to help improve your life. So therefore you can have a choice. This is a choice, this is America. You can choose to be either rich or you can choose to be poor. The mindset and how you think things is gonna affect how you see things. And how you see things is gonna affect how you do things. If you feel that everybody out there owes you something, my friends, you're not gonna get very far ahead in life. So with that being said, before I let you go, please check out these videos right here. The five industries that's most likely to make you a millionaire. And over here, if you wanna consider making a lot more money than yet right now, consider the, watching this video, The Millionaire Math. Watch this video so I can break it down for you and how to make your first 100,000 to then making your first million. So that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Rich versus poor? Put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be money smart today. Bye-bye.